Good evening and welcome to another episode of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Sutton. This is part one of the lesson on the compound angle formula branch of trigonometry. Uh, so how I introduce this, the compound angle, if you think about what the word compound means, well in maths you have compound shapes, uh, which are shapes made up of other shapes. Uh, in chemistry you have compounds, which are made up of elements. Uh, so a compound angle um, is made up of more than one angle. So we have two here that are given on the formula sheet, one for sine and one for cos. Uh, so one of those, I've, I've written about how they appear um, on the formula sheet. So if you have sine of A plus B, where A and B are two different angles, uh, it is possible to write that in expanded form as sine A cos B, so the first value, sine the first angle, multiplied by cos the second angle, plus cos A, so cos the first angle, multiplied by sine B, sine the second angle. Um, if rather than uh, the sum of A and B, A plus B, you have the difference, so A minus B, all that changes is the plus in the middle becomes minus. So sine of A minus B uh, would equal sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. Um, and we'll see how this is useful um, in a moment or so. There is a similar identity for cos of the sum of two angles or the difference of two angles. Uh, now, however, this may be the first time that you've seen um, this symbol here, uh, where you have minus or plus. So you'd be familiar with plus or minus from things like the quadratic formula, uh, but minus or plus um, you might not have seen before. So just talking briefly about what that means. If you have cos of A plus B, inside a bracket, A and B representing two different angles, then you can write cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. And if it's minus inside the bracket, so the difference between angles A and B, you can write it as cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So with the cos one, whatever sign you've got in the bracket, you've got the opposite sign in the expansion. So what I'm just going to do is a couple of examples, one that's an evaluate, evaluation, which is finding a number, and the other that's a proof um, to give you an idea of how we might use these. Um, so here we have evaluate uh, sine 50 cos 40 plus cos 50 sine 40. So you can see how this looks like one of the expansions that we've got on the right hand side. Um, and to um, enable us to decide which one, we need to look at the order of um, the signs and the causes and the sign in between the expansion. So you can probably see by looking at that, you've got sine cos, so it's looking like this one, uh, and you'd be absolutely right. So I'm gonna write sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, because this expression here looks just like this identity. Um, and what I've worked out by doing that is that the value of A is 50 and the value of B is 40. Now, given that this identity here is the identity for sine of A plus B, and I now know that A is 50 and B is 40, I can simplify this expression here, sine 50 cos 40 plus cos 50 sine 40, to be sine, and then in a bracket, 50 plus 40. And the reason the question is asking me to evaluate is I can find a number that can be my answer for this question. Because 50 plus 40 is 90. And as we know, sine of 90 in degrees is one. So sine 50 cos 40 plus cos 50 sine 40 evaluates to one and you could check that on a calculator if you wish. Okay, the other thing that we have to do um, is we have to use these compound angle identities to prove relationships between different trig functions. So what I have here is to prove that sine of 90 minus theta is the same as cos theta. So what I would do uh, is I would look at the bit that's got the two terms in a bracket and I would say which of the identities that I've got up here matches what I've got here. Well, I've got sine, so it's got to be this one. And then in the bracket, I've got a difference. So it's not going to be sine of A plus B, 
it's going to be sine of a minus b. Uh, so I'll just write that out from the expansion that I've given here. That would be sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So that's identified to me that that is the expression that I'm using. The, uh, that is the identity, I should say, that I'm using. So a minus b sine of 90 minus theta. All I'm going to do is wherever I see an a in the expansion, I'm going to write 90. And wherever I see a b in the expansion, I write theta. Now, I don't write negative theta. It's a difference, and that is dealt with by the sign between the terms here. I don't need to put negative theta in for b. b is just theta. So what that's going to look like is sine 90 cos theta minus cos 90 sine theta. So what you'll see is wherever I see an a in my identity, I write 90. And wherever I see a b in my identity, I write theta. Now, let's think about values. Sine of 90 is 1. So here we have 1 times by cos theta. And cos of 90 is 0. So we have a 0 sine theta. Multiplying by 0, we're going to be left with nothing. So what we have is 1 times by cos theta, which is cos theta. So we've proved, using a compound angle formula, that sine of 90 minus theta equals cos theta. So we can write QED, because that was quite easily done. If you just take a moment to think about the graph, of sine theta and the graph of cos theta, you may be able to work out actually why this makes perfect sense if you think about transformations. Um, but I'll leave that one with you and I'll see you in the next video.